So today's Wednesday and we're going to show you a little bit of tips and stuff about getting a transfer case out of a Chevy pickup. Uh, particularly, or 1998 to 2007, somewhere around there. This one's an 04. And the problem with this one is it had pump knock. So I had to replace the transfer case because it was just ripped up, ripped to pieces on the inside. I put in a new thing, but while I was looking at all these other videos, everybody's like, how do you get the transfer case out? Is it hard? Is it easy? How do you do it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take you through what it takes to get the transfer case out. This one's kind of halfway uh, between in and out. You can see where it disconnects there from the back of the transmission. So you have six bolts on this side. Excuse me. So you got uh, one that's in the bottom down here. You've got two on each side and then one on the top. So the one on the top's a little bit tricky to get to but not too bad. It's only hard because you get all this heat shield stuff from the exhaust. Um, as far as electrical plugs and the hose that's on it and the drive shafts, the transfer case is going to have two drive shafts coming out of it. One for the front axle, one for the back axle. On this one, this is a 246, so it's a slip shaft on the back and it's a slip shaft on the front. You see the splines there? So there's a boot that you got to pull off here. you got to undo the band around it and then get a pry bar and just get it to pucker and it'll come off. Um, before you take these out, you know, what makes them just not fall off going down the road? Well, that's a good question. On the other end, you have your yoke that the U-joint goes into. So you just have a couple of bolts, they're 11 millimeter, and then a strap between them. It'll look like this. And they just strap around the U-joint so you can see how it's circular looking through it this way. So it just grabs on each of these. So you pull these bolts out, and then take a pry bar and put the pry bar up underneath of there and just pry like that and it'll pop them out of here so they'll tend to want a seat and rust in there. So once that's down then you can go further back because it's not blocking you then you can pull it out the rest of the way and it'll just slip and adjust for uh, right there. So you've got some speed sensors on the back side of this you can see that you've got one on this side and one on this side and they both go to the same exciter ring so you just have to lift up on the buckle right there. Once it's up, they just come out, they burp because they got that uh, little rubber boot that keeps all the mud and yuck and s stuff out of that that you like to play in. You got these buckles on the top here. Um, you just take a screwdriver and put them in through right here and then just pull back and they open up just like that. Click it down like that. So you got one more sensor out here and that's just to let the truck know that the four-wheel drive's turning it's actually working but they're all actually the same. This one has an encoder motor it's electronic shift instead of manual shift so you have this great big plug right here to undo so you have to pull this little gray part back get it pushed back all the way squeeze the button and then you can get it to come undone. You can pull the transfer case down with the encoder motor on or unplug it and then just pull the bolts one two three and make sure that this plastic case doesn't get busted. These are around four hundred to seven hundred dollars so I just like pulling them off before dropping it down. Remember how I said there's two nuts on each side? If you look right here, here's one of them. There's a bracket on this side so there's one right here. These are all 15 millimeters. There's another up here. Here's another view of the one on the bottom and then the one on top you can't see but you can sure get your hand up in there and feel where it is. Now how do you get a wrench in there? That looks like it's kind of a funky angle. It's hard to get an extension to go in this way because this is all in the way. What I recommend strongly, I'll do a link in the description, is a gear wrench. Just a little 15 millimeter. It's a combination wrench because it's a, a box wrench, gear wrench on one side and it's a spanner open end on the other. So what I like to do is I'll just take it and use the spanner on the ones that are hard to get to and then on the ones that have more access then you just go like this. But that top one, this is especially nice let's see the other way, just flip it over so on that top one it's especially nice because it's hard to move very far so rather than having to take it on and off you just wiggle it up and down like that and it just pulls it right together so that's the hardest part, well that's one of the hard parts there's one other hard part of getting this out and that is that you see the tail cone of this goes over the cross member, or it's not a cross member exactly, it's a torsion bar. 
you know this is the torsion bar for the suspension it's essentially a spring and then this is the crossbar that it goes to so it doesn't just come out and go straight down it'd be way too much work to take this out so what you got to do is you take it back and it'll actually clear the studs you can see that these are all 15 millimeter nuts and so it'll clear the studs out of there but it'll still sit on a slip shaft so when you pull this back it'll clear uh, the slip shaft it's just like this um, on the back of the transmission it'll hold it up till you get past there and then you'll notice it sticks out further down this way so what I do is I let this one swing down to the bottom and then just grab it by that with your jack or whatever and then just twist it go back just a little bit more and then just rotate it this way and then come down and that way you can clear the tail cone out of this and not have a precarious crazy thing other way I do it is I'll just get underneath of it and grab the thing and pull it out that's how you get the transfer case out of a GM. If you don't know what kind of transfer case you have or what you're dealing with, um, look on the tag here. Look at the very top of the tag. You see where it says 246 GM. This is a new process. You see it rainbow new process gear across the top. And then it says 246 and it's for General Motors. They don't always say GM. And sometimes they'll say 246 down there is gear ratio 272. Uh, but that's how you tell what you have. Another way you can tell, like the code for this one is NP8, like if you're on carpart.com, they'll ask you what code you have and what transmission. This has a 4L60E. Oh sweet lord, it's full of junk. But anyway, you look in here and you'll see all those groups of letters and one of those will say NP8 and that just means that it's the, uh, see it right there, where is it? Thanks for watching my video. This should be really helpful because I know a lot of people had questions and that's why I'll just have this video online. I'll post it as a link for the one that I'm going to do a week or two from now on how to put the case saver so you don't get pump knock in your transfer case and make it leak everywhere. So anyway, thanks for watching. Be sure to click thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, anything to add, leave it in the comments below. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. You guys are awesome. Cheers.